One of the questions I had before purchasing my current RV that I spec'd here with the Onan 5500 LP generator was how many amps does it take to cold start the generator? And as you probably know, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of amp draw to get any engine to turn over, and a generator is no different. Now this question is particularly important if you're like me and you want to upgrade to lithium batteries on your RV because lithium batteries aren't really designed to be starting engines. In fact, that's why in cars they put lead acid batteries, or at least one of the reasons. They're certainly more cost effective. But that's why in cars you have a lead acid battery because they're really good at providing that surge of energy that's needed to start your car again and again and again. Whereas lithium batteries are really designed more for a nice, even, slow amp draw, you know, so you can have lots of time off of the grid. And so in today's video, I want to answer the question, how many amps does it actually take to start my Onan LP5500 generator. Now obviously you can see that I've already upgraded to lithium batteries and spoiler alert, I'm having no issues whatsoever starting this Onan 5500 LP generator. But before I purchased it, I did a lot of research because I wanted to know how many lithium batteries would it take to start the 5500 LP model. And as I did the research online, most sources were citing around 400 to 450 cold cranking amps that would be required in order to start this generator. Now, I'm not a battery expert, but as I understand it, cold cranking amps is a measure to give you an idea under extremely cold temperatures, perhaps zero to below freezing. When it's really hard to get an engine to turn right, the colder it is, the harder it is to get that engine to turn over. So when it's really cold, how many amps are required to get that engine going? And that's what cold cranking amps are essentially, as I understand it. And so the goal is to then have a battery bank that can deliver and support the cold cranking amps necessary to get that generator going. And like I said before, you know, lithium batteries are not really designed for that. I mean, their forte is not sending this giant surge of energy all at once. But nevertheless, manufacturers do provision them with the ability to deliver a fairly substantial amp load all at once. In fact, here on these Battleborn batteries that I went with, you can see right on the battery it's printed that they are designed for a maximum continuous current of 100 amps, but then they are able to produce 200 amps for 30 seconds at a time, and they call that the max surge current. And so in my case, I've got two batteries, so that gives me a maximum of potentially 400 amps that these two batteries can send to get this generator going. And of course, we only need that giant surge of energy to get the generator actually started, which you know, typically, even at a cold start, which I'll show you in just a little bit, it's probably not gonna be more than five, 10, maybe 15 seconds max of the generator starting up. And then once it's started, we no longer need that surge of energy, and that's how we're able to make this work with a lithium battery bank. All right, so the parameters for today's demonstration are as follows. First up on the temperature, you know, I wanted it to be as cold as possible outside because the more extreme the temperature is, the colder it is, the harder it's gonna be for that generator to start up, the more amps that it will require, and I think we'll get a more accurate representation of the cold cranking amps. I mean, if we can start the generator today when it's colder, then surely when it's 60, 70, you know, 80 degrees outside, we're not gonna be requiring as many amps to get that generator started. Now, here in Georgia the last two days it's been in the 20s at night and 30s during the daytime which is pretty unusual here but it has started warming up today a little bit so it's not quite as cold as I'd like it to be but I've got my little infrared temperature gun here and so we'll just shoot the surface temperature of the generator you can see we're hovering right at about 49 degrees so not quite as cold as I'd like it to be today but it's about as good as I'm gonna be able to get it for the demonstration and second as far as getting an accurate amp draw you know the current as the generator is turning over and starting up we're going to be using this Victron battery monitor here that I've got installed on the fifth wheel and basically there's a shunt that isolates everything on the negative terminal going into the battery bank so that it can give you an accurate reading of the current going in and out of that battery bank so you can see right now we're at hundred percent so it's been plugged in charging so we're topped off at 100%, then you can see here the stats like the voltage. Now there is a little bit of current being drawn right now. I don't have any lights or any fans or anything like that running, but there is the BM Pro system which is running, and then probably the inverter. There's no load on the inverter right now, but it does consume a little bit just running on standby. So you can see we're at about two amps, just a little bit over two amps there, which equates to 28 watts. 
So as we start up the generator, we're going to be paying attention here to this current figure right here that's negative 2.09 amps right now. We're going to watch and see what that number fluctuates to while the generator is starting. And then third, as far as this being a cold start test, I have not used the generator for about five days. And so what you're about to see here is the first time the generator is being started after sitting idle for five days. And I'm not going to prime the generator. Typically, I only do that if I've, you know, swapped out propane tanks and there's air in the lines, then I would prime the generator to make sure that that propane is right there at the engine ready for it to consume. But since I haven't done any of that and the propane's been connected the whole time, I'm not going to prime the engine. Plus, I really want to make this a more difficult, challenging start to really demonstrate, you know, worst case scenario, how many amps would be drawn. All right, so those are the parameters for our demonstration. I've got the cover off the generator so I can reach the start switch here to start up the engine. Then I've got my phone opened up here with the battery monitor open. And again, we're gonna be paying attention to this current field, which is showing a negative two amps right now. And then I'll also verify once more the temperature here with the infrared gun. Oh wow, so actually the engine block itself is quite a bit colder. You can see about 42 degrees. 45 over there so yeah it warms up a little bit there but yeah down here we're looking a lot colder so that'll be good so about 42 degrees 41 inside there so let's go ahead and fire up the generator and i'm going to have the camera pointed down here so that we can keep a good eye on the current there all right so i'm just going to hold down this switch here and then we're going to go down here Alright, so we just saw it firsthand here. It looked like while the generator was starting up, the maximum amp draw as it spiked was right at 101.5 amps. And so we can just round up to 102 to make it easy. And then if we subtract the idle amp draw before the generator started right at 2 amps there, that leaves us with exactly 100 amps. So that's a lot less than I expected. You know, remember when I was researching online, a lot of folks were saying 400 to 450 cold pranking amps is what this generator would require to start up. Now granted, it's not zero degrees outside. As you saw on the engine block, it was more like 42 degrees. But still, it's hard to imagine if it takes 100 amps to start at 42 degrees on the engine block, it's hard to imagine it going all the way up to 400 amps if it was, you know, maybe zero degrees or 10 degrees outside. But while we've got everything set up here and all the equipment out, I'm kind of curious. I want to do a separate test now that the generator is warmed up and just see what a difference that makes as far as the temperature. And before I shut the generator off, let me just point out that because the generator is running, obviously the converter charger kicked in and it charged the battery up to 100%. You can see that number there, the 1.5 amps, is representative of what the converter charger is sending to the battery bank since the generator is running there. Well, let's go ahead and shut the engine off so you can hear me a little bit better. There we go. That's a lot better. But let's get some temperature readings on the engine block just to see the difference now if we do it a second time. Oh wow, so you can see we're looking at, in this same spot, remember we were reading about 41 and a half degrees, 42 right there. So now we're all the way up to 75, it looks like. And then if we go up here, okay, yeah, there you go. So you can really see how much it heated up. And it's been running probably for about 10 minutes. So it gets warm pretty quickly there. But let's do a second test now with these higher temperatures and just see the difference that temperature makes on the generator. So you can see back here on the battery monitor, so we're still at that kind of negative two amp draw, that idle draw with the BM Pro system running and probably the inverter with no load on it right there. So again, we're gonna start the generator up and pay attention to this current number and see you know, how much less amp draw it is now that the generator generator is warmed up here okay all right so here we go same thing I'll hold down on this start and pan down to the phone all right so this second time it looked like it peaked right at about 87 amps with the generator engine warmed up already and so again if we subtract the two amp draw the idle amp draw from 87 we get 85 amps approximately and so that's 15 full amps less than the 100 amps that it took to start up when the engine was completely cold. Again, registering about 41, 42 degrees on the engine block compared to much warmer. I mean, I think it was in the 70s and 80s here on the second go round once it was warmed up. 
So that gives us kind of an idea of the role temperature plays on starting up the generator and how many amps are required to get it going. All right, let me summarize today's demonstration. So first up, when the engine was completely cold, you know, it was reading about 42 degrees or so off the engine block inside there. It took 100 amps to get the generator going. Then once the generator was warmed up already and the temperature on the engine block was closer in that 70 to 80 degree range, then it only took 85 amps to get that generator started. So we could say 15% less amps from 100 to 85 15% less amps once the generator got up to operating temperature there. So how many amps would it require if the temperature was colder than that 42 degrees? I mean, let's say it was zero degrees, right? We went from 42 to let's just say 80. To make it easy, if we were to go 42 to zero, you know, would it be 15% more? Probably not. My guess is that that relationship between temperature and how many amps is required is probably more of a curve of some kind, maybe an exponential curve. And so it probably would take a lot more than just 115 amps probably not 400 to 450 it just seems like that number is just way too high given what we saw here in today's demonstration so my thoughts on all this are if it takes 100 amps to get the generator going at 42 degrees you know realistically for me it's hard to imagine being in a situation where i need to start the generator and it's under 20 degrees right even that seems like a stretch but let's just say I did need to start the generator and it was 20 degrees outside. It's hard to imagine based on what we saw in today's demonstration that it would require over 150 amps, let alone 200 amps to get that generator started, even if it was cooler, such as 20 degrees. Now, if you're watching this and you have experience starting generators in colder temperatures like that under 20 degrees, definitely chime in and let us know in the comments below. But the implications of that are, you know, I've got two Battleborn batteries and each of them have a 200 amp surge capacity. So 400 amps of surge capacity together for 30 seconds. So based on what we saw in today's demonstration, I mean, really, I could technically get away with just one of those Battleborn batteries. And that should still be enough, given that we were looking at 100 amps to get that generator going and it's capable of giving me 200 with just one battery. So just some food for thought there. I still think it's nice to have that 200 amp hours of capacity just for your longevity on the battery range, but it does help to know that you probably could get by with just one battle born battery there. Well, folks, that's all I've got for today's video, but let me make one other point on the battery. And that is if you're looking to upgrade to a lithium battery on your RV, you know, Battleborn is obviously one of the more popular brands out there that's more well known, especially in the RV industry. But on my last fifth wheel, I had a Renogy lithium battery pack and absolutely loved it. It's really a great battery that is a little more budget friendly, comes in a little bit less expensive than the Battleborn, but yet has most of the same features there. But basically each manufacturer has a different surge rating that it's capable of producing out of that battery. And on the Renogy battery, if I remember right, it was capable of producing 100 amp hours for a 30 second surge. And that's actually why I went with the Battleborn here on this rig, because I thought, hey, I'm gonna need as much of that surge current as I possibly can get. And since the Battleborn had 200, that'd give me times two 400 versus if I did the Renogy, only 200 between two batteries. But all that to say, based on what we saw in today's demonstration, demonstration, I probably would have been just fine had I gone with the Renogy brand of lithium batteries. So just something to consider as you're looking at different lithium batteries, they're all going to have different surge ratings. So just be sure to watch for that. Now, if you haven't seen the full tour and review I did here on my Jayco Pinnacle 37 MDQS, definitely check it out because that's kind of set the stage for a lot of these other side videos, basically questions that I had during researching and purchasing here on my Pinnacle. And today's just an example of one of those questions. So I'm trying to answer those just as a resource to the community so if you watch that tour and you see a question that you'd like an answer to definitely let me know in the comments below because that'll kind of help me with the videos up and coming but as always thanks for watching <music>